I feel like we'll get in trouble if we don't ask you about your new album. So, oh, I it, forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, they were kind enough to send it over to us, so I have got to hear it. Got to hear oh, it. yeah. And I actually like don't want to spoil all the songs because I want them to be surprised. Even though we still did back it, and so we are looking forward to our autograph comments. They should be uh, coming. I have to do that this week. <laughs> but I have to all of the things. And also <laughs> order new. I have to order more because I forgot about promos. I was like, I'm not ordering a bunch of CDs. Nobody buys CDs anymore. <laughs> like, at shows and stuff, they really don't. Mm, yeah. And so I ordered, like, kind of just enough to cover the pledge people mm. and then, like, some extras, knowing that I'd have to reorder eventually a little bit. But yeah. <laughs> but I have to already. Like, I didn't get enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good problem to have, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Great. But, uh, yeah, so, like, we earlier we said how it's therapeutic to write, but how do you write, like... I'm going to spoil this song for everyone, uh, Death and Life. How do you write a song kind of like that? Because that's just kind of a story rather than like, yeah, first person. Yeah, but it's person true. Is it? Yeah. So that one in particular, I, I tried the, with this record to kind of stop being introspective. Yeah. <laughs> because who wants to hear one person's <laughs> point of view for like three or four records in a row? Yeah. It's yeah. boring. Yeah. I'm not that interesting. <laughs> so... I started to kind of pay attention to, like, all the stories that were happening around me. And and that song in particular, it, it had been marinating for a long time. Like, I knew that, like, this situation's happening and I'm watching it and that needs a song. Yeah. And then this situation over here is happening and that needs one too. And I didn't know that they were the same song. Yeah. Like, for a long time. But, so, like, that one, I just, Roy's aunt actually her husband passed away and in 2014 and I was talking to her one day we had gone to the cemetery for something probably a funeral maybe just to walk around because we do that (laughs) (laughs) but the kids wanted to see Uncle Joe's gravestone and we went over there and he still had the little funeral temporary oh really like the the metal one oh yeah just said Joe Solo and it had been two and a half years since wow. he passed. Wow. And so the next time I went over to, to Ann's house, I was like, well, to the cemetery, and the girls wanted to see Joe's gravestone. And she's like, I know, I haven't done that yet. And it's, I want it to be this and this and this. And she was kind of telling me what she wanted on the, and she couldn't get it right. She couldn't figure it out exactly. And she wanted a double one that had her stuff on it too already. Yeah. And, and I was like, yeah, and also it's a lot harder when you see it in stone. Yeah. And she goes, yeah. Yeah. You know, it just kind of went, mm-hmm. like, yeah. it was like, it maybe hasn't happened. Yeah. If, until, you, you know, like, I it's just the, kind of, it's that, it's the, the accept, I mean, written in stone, and the right. acceptance of it, yeah. Right, and, and so she was like, yeah, you know, and so that moment, I was like, well, that's, a, that's a thing. Yeah. You know? so like, <laughs> What's going on here? So that's the first verse, is yeah. her, you know, mm-hmm. Like it was almost three years before she, oh, wow. before they got a stone, and so, and and also like there's, I'm just I watch like the fam, like she, they've got grandkids and the grandkids act and look like the grandpa and they you know like there's like this yeah. and that helps her, yeah to, to face you know, being alone or whatever yeah. you know, and they're a really tight knit family so the kids come over all the time and and so it just helps her. And, and then Roy's dad is the second verse. Okay. My husband's okay. dad passed away, and he knew, like, he had cancer, so he knew. Like, it was terminal, you're, you got six months. Yeah, you know, well, go make amends, yeah. do your stuff. And, yeah. and, and Roy's dad asked him to build a, him a casket. To build a oh, wow. That's, it's heavy! <laughs> yeah. It's so heavy! Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? And Roy's like, dad asked me blah 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 I'm like okay are you going to do it you know and he's yeah I have to he asked me to do that no. you know well so then the day that he died and it wasn't he didn't end up dying from the cancer he ended up six months later fainting and hitting his head on a pole and oh wow and he like they couldn't operate it was but I was like what a blessing like pancreatic cancer or fall asleep sleep for three days yeah you know? and, like <laughs> I'm sure that your dad would be fine with that. <laughs> yeah. But, so he died 
we went home and Roy went to the lumber store. And, and it was like, it was one of those things where like his dad was really smart because he knows that that's how Roy handles stress is to go like do, do work. something to, like, is to go work, yeah, you know, have yeah. something to do. So like we're all eating casseroles and pies and visiting and hugging and <laughs> doing the funeral thing, you know, like the visiting thing. Yeah. And him and all the men were in the shop with nails, wow. you know, hand wow. building this coffin for his dad. So it was like one last mm-hmm. thing. And so I was like, okay, that's a song somehow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to do that, really. And that was, and it took four years for me to get that into, like, between when the song happened yeah. and, the, and it going swirling in my brain, yeah. you mm-hmm. know. But what helped it all come full circle was then in 2014, so two years after he died, we had a baby I was born on his birthday. Oh, really? So all every line in that song, you know, that he had a baby boy born on the same day as his dad. Yeah. So he took his name to give him. It's the best thing that he had. So we named our son Thomas Roy after Tommy. Oh, and he was wow. born on his birthday. Like it was like this yeah. whole thing where we're like, this is not real life. <laughs> <laughs> like that all just really happened. This bow tied too neatly. <laughs> yeah. I know. And he acts like him. He's a little shithead. <laughs> like he is real funny and charming and smart and yeah. and is really gonna get in a lot of trouble you know, as a grown up, I can tell. <laughs> but but like all of those things like they actually happened and then as I came up with the chorus like it's just like everything just keeps moving you know and it's just the the whole point of that song I tried and my mom called me the other day and said do you expect anybody to like this song (laughs) and I was like well yeah I I mean I don't know I hope but I didn't I mean I just kind of I hope so but it's not like to me it's not sad it's like just kind of matter of fact like this is how it goes. Like everybody yeah. knows that you put one foot in front of the other, and you. This is how you deal with life after death. Like yeah. life here yeah. after somebody that you love, and and we all handle it in different ways. Like you know, Roy builds coffin, and then my kids. Every funeral that we go to, they go. Can we go look for people? And they go and look at the tombstones and see if they know. Like they know where their great grandparents are, and they know where their uncles are, and yeah. a cousin, or is this mm. person that you said blah blah? You know, mm. I recognize this name, and you know, Joni can read now, so she's like yeah. all over the place <laughs> and run in, and it's no big deal to them. Yeah. Like they're so comfortable with the idea of dying because yeah. they have known so many people. We live in such a small town, and we're all so close knit that. Yeah, you know, sure. Anybody who passes away, there's a lot of old people there, you know, <laughs> and they know them all and they love them all. So anybody that passes away, can I go to the funeral? Can I go to the cemetery? And you know, so that's why that's how I got that idea of jumping oh, yeah. over rocks. And, yeah. You know, and I don't know. It just it ended up, and I didn't even finish that song until two days into the studio. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. I was in, like, we were already recording, and I was like, I gotta finish this one, and I don't know how to do it. And I just kind of started playing on it and figured it out finally and then we recorded it the next day (laughs) I know me too it was just like I needed it was one of those like after I finished it I was just like numb like I worked really hard on that (laughs) (laughs) like my brain has been working under the radar for a long time now yeah yeah every time there's always those songs every once in a while where I get done here listening to it I'm just like yeah (laughs) I know I needed that one and Now I can stop thinking about it. <laughs> it's one of those. Move on to your next pop country album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's easier. Bring in some synthesizers. And just, and tell, just tell someone that they're going to play banjo, but then you just don't really put it on there. Right. <laughs> None yeah. of it was plugged in. I yeah. know. I was interested to see like how the country music purists were going to react to like that first single that I put out the, the being gone mm-hmm. it's like yeah. got interesting like rhythm bass yeah, lines sure. and stuff sure. it's like, I can't wait to hear somebody tell me that's not country <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be real fun like, I'm sure there's someone out there that's so hardcore that's like oh it's not country 
country. Well, what I kept telling the guys, like, I kept telling them to make it less country. Like, it's like, look, guys, my voice is country enough. No matter what comes out of my mouth, <laughs> no matter what yeah. you play, like, it's... Like, you know, you I listen to the words and hear you. It's going to be, this is going to be, you know, but, yeah. I don't need you to camp it out yeah. for me. Like, we need to, you know. Yeah. But there are the different levels of people. Some say country music died with Florida George Line. Some say it died with Garth Brooks. Some right. Some it's oh, been yeah. dead since you talk to, was alive. Like, yeah, yeah, you talk to people that were in Nashville in the 80s and the 90s, and they're like, oh, yeah, we were saying all this same shit back then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it, just keeps, it just keeps going. <laughs> Which unfortunately means, like, in 20 years, I'll be telling my Yeah, they're like, you should have heard this stuff. Yeah, you should have heard the stuff we were saying when, you know, with Kenny Rogers. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, like, there's that, what's his name, Reginald or whatever, that Twitter account where, yeah, uh, he's, (laughs) I'm just glad I'll be dead when they consider Kane Brown classic country. Oh, good. But, you know, like, country music has always been influenced by pop music. Yeah. Like, Ray Price was pop music. Oh, yeah? Because back then, pop was big band. Yeah. So yeah. then they put, so Ray Price was singing, you know, was Cherokee Cowboys, and they were doing their country thing, their mm-hmm. shuffles and their waltzes, and mm-hmm. then they did production with the strings, and with, oh, look so sad, I know. You know, then he yeah. was a crooner mm-hmm. that was a country crooner. But that was pop music then. Yeah. So they were having the same discussion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. back then, country music didn't have drums. Like, Hank Williams put drums. I think it was Hank. Yeah. And they were like, no! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah we, saw, we, saw, we saw a bluegrass band in Chicago a couple of years ago, and they are like, buy our records. The first one has a drum round, so we're not as proud of that one. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> yeah, there's a thing about that. But, I mean, this discussion has been happening since the 50s. Yeah. Totally. Like, yeah. since there was radio. Yeah. Since there was something that was considered country music and popular music. Yeah. Like, so, and people forget that pop stands for popular. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So they try to take, yeah. like... Yeah. The, the, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So they try to take the pop music and infiltrate this other thing and make it a bigger thing. Mm-hmm. And it, hap- and it yeah. happened in the 70s with disco. That's where we got some of those Dolly and Kenny mm-hmm. collaborations, oh, yeah, yeah. you know, where it's like there's there's a disco beat behind that yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, Islands in the Stream is a Bee Gees song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and then like you hit the '80s and like you and you have Dan Seals. I want to bop with you, baby. <laughs> I mean. That's not country. <laughs> you get achy, breaky heart. And then, you, and then you come in and you have achy, breaky heart. And then, like, there's, like, every decade has another pop oh, yeah. infiltration, yeah. you know? Yeah, but I do love, though, with... But it always goes back to something. Yeah. Yes. But I do love that, like, Charlie Crockett and Joshua Headley, they both have that very old school right. sound, but it sounds new at the same time. Right. Like... There have been bands they put out their record where they're trying to sound like a fifties band, back. and they sound like they're from the fifties. Whereas these ones, they sound, they sound old, modern. but they're definitely modernized right. a little bit, and that's what I love that kind of thing. Yeah, Headley's record is great. The, his Mr. whoever Trump did Pops. his vocal mixes are really great. Yeah, yeah. It sound yeah, it sounds modern. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, it's always going to be that argument. Yeah, I, I've had people say like, or else they'll have also the same argument of just like that. And country, you're only country if you listen to Thomas Rhett. I'm like, what? Like, uh, <laughs> like you're, everyone's except bar for is I really different. also love that Marry Me song. I do actually like that song. It's not. <laughs> I a, wish it didn't story. have that beat behind exactly. it though. Yeah. Like, yeah. if if they would just let that be a a country song, it's a country yeah. song. Like, yeah, like lyrically, the storyline exactly. is there. Like, and it's clever and. Because that's what, I mean, whenever it comes down to it, like, substance-wise, Bruce Robinson told me one time, so I don't want to steal his quote, <laughs> but I stole it from somebody else, but <laughs> country music has always been for grown-ups, and pop music has always been for kids, and whenever you, and so now there's nothing for the grown-ups. Mm, yeah. Because it used to be that country music had storylines, and there were... Yeah. And there were at least, like, some sort of, like, 
adult, you know, not that every song has to be about cheating and drinking and yeah. Yeah. whatever, it's but it's like something that it makes you think. And pop music makes you have fun. Yeah, yeah. So now, there's nothing on the radio that makes you go, that's why the same thing. That's why Tin Man happened. That's why, yeah. you know, Stapleton happened. Like those, yeah, Fire Away by Stapleton. Yeah, yes. those things. That song, that Marry Me song is great because it makes you go, oh, poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, ah. Exactly. Actually, yeah. like, like, I was in. Whenever I heard that song coming on the radio, I was like, all right, I'm going to give this a shot. Oh, good one. And then I got to the one well, she married me. I was like, ah, oh, so yeah. sad now. This is great. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it I sounds like I should be having fun, but it's so sad. Well, it's also the same with on his last album, I think. He had a song called Crash and Burn, and it was written by Stapleton. And I went yeah. online and just read the lyrics. Like, that's an amazing song. Right. But it just sounds, it's just a pop song. Right. And I was like, oh, it sucks, because it's such, like... They I'm glad to hear a Stapleton play. <laughs> yeah, they put production on it that makes me not want to, you know, yeah. like as soon as I hear the, mm, you yeah, know, yeah. like those, like, but no. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not into that. If that's what it yeah. takes you, if that's what makes you write it, because sometimes people use those beats to start to get inspiration to write a song. Yeah. Like it's a thing, they're just like, like track guys, that's what they call them. They're called track guys. You go into a songwriting meeting and somebody's like are you a track guy yeah cool okay well i've been working on this there's like a track guy and a lyric guy huh so one guy has like some music and some beats and stuff and then the other guy writes the lyrics to that track so like that's kind of, and i i don't know if that's how they've been doing hip-hop for a long time or whatever i don't know that mm-hmm. but that's what's happened that's what happens in nashville now Okay. I've never written with a track guy. <laughs> Drew Kennedy writes with him a lot, so y'all should interview Drew on here and I, ask I him. I, I got his to. I got his last album like a couple months early to review, and I loved that album. Yeah, House, y'all the should. song House blew me away, and I loved that song. Yeah. <laughs> Did he write that with Lori? I'm not sure. I don't. Think, I never got the songwriting credits. Turn so on, I'm not sure. Into a house. Yeah, that song. Blew yeah. Me away. I think he. I think that's one of his Lori co-write. He writes with her a lot. So jealous. Yeah. <laughs> but, but y'all should interview him because he does that track thing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I would. And he loves I'd it. love to talk to him. And he yeah. loves it. We'll call him up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to start blasting him with like. Twitter so, what's going to happen like... now, like in the next couple of years or whatever, all these Drew Kennedy songs are going to start getting cut and you're going to be like, this sounds like a hip hop song, but those words are real smart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I'm so confused. <laughs> I don't know. What's happening. You know, so like sometimes they have to use those things, but then I go, but you didn't have to use it in an actual song. You could have yeah. taken the track out. Could have put an actual drummer could've on the song. <laughs> but yeah, I do love that very good song. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there are the guilty pleasures. I'm especially sure there's if- more that I would love if I listened to it more. But I have to do that. I have to go, if I heard the writer sing this with a guitar... That would be a great song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I so I realized that about myself that I just don't prefer that production. Sure. Of yeah. like the big, you know, pop production or whatever. But every once in a while, like today, I heard that Kenny Chesney song and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm into this. Like, I think it was the second verse said something that surprised me. I don't remember what it is now, but he it surprised me. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. And I was so like, so yeah. Good line. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, when Travis Meadows' like, album came out. Surprisingly great line, guys. Yeah, yeah, he introduced me to that song when Travis Meadows' album came out. We talked about it on our podcast when we did an episode about him. And yeah, that song is fantastic. Yeah, so when we found out that Chesney was covering Travis Meadows and John Bowman, we're like, I'm not mad about that. Yeah. Because yeah. he, obviously he's reaching out to people right. who kind of deserve it. Yeah. And like oh, going back to like, Eric. Well, he and like Gaddis was writing for him for a while too, and that's another. Like Keith Gaddis, he did like El Cerrito Place. And oh yeah, sure. yeah. You know, yeah. Those, those are his. Y'all need to get that. You don't need to get Gaddis's record if you don't have it. Big City yeah. Blues. I'm sure. It's the only record he's ever put out. Oh yeah, so just find the one. Yeah. Okay. Keith Gaddis. Yeah. But Chesney reached out. Like they they became friends and he wrote them too. So he he likes the good guys. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. It's the same with like. I mean, going back to Eric Church, he had, like, Rihanna Giddens on his, I don't know if I pronounced that yeah. right, but had her on a track. <laughs> yeah. He brought Ash McBride on stage with him when I saw him in Chicago a few no, years back. Like, why can't I get to be friends with Eric Church? 
<laughs> well, our huge overreaching podcast, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm, sure he, I'm sure he's listening. Eric, right if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> Ray Wiley Hubbard likes me. His wife made my baby a quilt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to be my friend. <laughs> I like your songs. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's. Yeah, I just love real country music and that's the whole reason we started this thing is yeah, just to great. help people with I mean like we always said even if we can get one more fan of a band we've done right. our job that's so all we can get one can more, more person to check out your music yeah. this is success other than the fact that we're just bummed we got to meet you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well I'm sorry I talk a lot no it's perfect oh, that's great Kevin was worried we wouldn't have anything to talk about oh, well, <laughs> I was worried we wouldn't have anything to talk about just ask me just one like, question and I'll be talking about something completely different <laughs> Lots of, that reminds me. Uh, but that yeah, makes it so much easier. And I mean, yeah, it's just insane of what's happened with this. Of we got to talk to Dale Watson, yeah. like about the Ameripolitan cool. Awards, which is another cool, another thing of we've had the discussion of do you kind of give in and say that this is what country is now? And like he did, he went to Ameripolitan or Americana or yeah. folk or you know all those different titles. Or do we say no? This is country, and we want to or we keep hold it as our country. Ground. Yeah, yeah. And it's always a decision of like, I mean, I see the both arguments. I'm just like, if you're going to take this and say it's country, then we're going to go do our own thing over here. And right. like the Ameripolitan Awards have done great things for introducing like other artists like that into it. And so we like that, but at the same time, yeah, we are stubborn. We want to say like, no, we listen to country music. Yeah, you don't. No, <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> 